us for worship today at St. John United. Then if we can find, I always tell people, you know, uh, one of the challenges is to find the gift in any season that we're in. Um, that the things that happen to us don't always seem good or feel good, but something good can come out of it. So perhaps one of the blessings of this COVID-19 pandemic season is that in our life together on Sunday mornings, there is no such thing as a snow day anymore. Yeah. And so we're kind of smiling that it would be a little fortuitous that this big snowfall would be happening on our annual meeting day, which sometimes would cause us a lot of concern, but not today. So on behalf of St. John United, uh, we invite you to mute your devices as we open up and I will have to ask um, Chris to uh, allow me to share my screen so I can bring the opening of our worship service and a few brief announcements to you. Just a second. Mm -hmm. um. So Chris, if you go to the share screen Got it. Try it now. Thank or you, Alvin. Alvin. Thank you. Or Alvin, right one now. of you. Thank you. Um. So we do apologize. We're often <laughs> moving. We're often. Um, Where do you see that? A little more, a little smoother, but for some reason today, things are a little bit more challenging. So we are delighted that you have joined St. John United Church in the city of Columbia, Maryland, in the Wild Lake Interfaith Center, that we are um, a Reconciling United Methodist Church and a Presbyterian USA More Light Congregation. Today is Sunday, January the 31st, the fourth Sunday of Epiphany. We welcome you to prepare yourself for this time of worship, to experience God's loving presence, and be reminded that each one of us is a different and unique uh, celebration of the sacred worth of all persons, regardless of who you are, where you've come from, what you have experienced or whom you love, you're welcome here. That if you seek to live in peace and grow in love with God and with others, we welcome you. Today uh, is a reminder that our annual meeting <clears throat> will take place just after our worship service today. And uh, today during worship, Reverend J.W. Park from the Baltimore Washington Conference of the United Methodist Church will be preaching. And we have Reverend Dr. Jackie Taylor from the Baltimore Presbytery in attendance. And I apologize, I left a C out of her first name. On that, on that particular slide. Um, if you go to our website at sjunited.org, you will find information on our worship life together, our service to the community, uh, study, prayer. You'll find information as well about our annual report, which has been issued to all of you. Uh, we hope that you've received that and find links as well to COVID-19 resources, updates about vaccination taking place in Howard County and other types of community support. You can always reach us uh, very well through our email at sjucolumbia at gmail.com. Next week on Tuesday or in just a couple of days, we will begin in the larger community of Howard County, the fourth year of continuing dialogue called Courageous Conversations. These are conversations that take place around race, religion, and equity in Howard County. Uh, they are taking place each Tuesday in the month of February from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, I've been asked to be a facilitator this year and, and I'm sitting on the advisory board. If you would like to enter into that dialogue and meet some people in our community and hear about and share about one another's experiences, you can register at hococourageousconversations.com. I hope to see some of you there. 
We have been in a sermon series this season called Follow Me. Uh, during the season of Epiphany, after the birth of Jesus, we are entering into the life of Jesus and his call to follow, to be disciples after the model of the first disciples and learn more about what it means to be 21st century followers of Jesus. Our prelude this morning is You Raise Me Up by Patricia Hammer, our accompanist. Our opening song is All Creatures of Our God and King. It is a grand production out of a multicultural church in New York City. And I will note that it does begin uh, in your worship bulletin. The first line of lyrics does begin with All Creatures of Our God and King. Somehow that got... Um, that got left out. Uh, again, we welcome Reverend Dr. Jackie Taylor and Reverend J.W. Park, um, who is preaching today. Chris, will you lead us in this opening?
what a beautiful and grand opening to this day of praise and worship. I love the more inclusive contemporary lyrics and the fact that people had some of their creatures, great and small, on the screen. Friends, will you join with me in our call to worship this morning? And I will be reading both parts on this day. Come to worship this day. Bring with you all your joys and sorrows. Jesus will offer hope. Come to worship this day, believing in the power of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus will bring us healing. Come to worship this day, feeling the presence of God. Jesus will teach us new ways to live. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning and the basis for God's word coming to you today is from the first chapter in the Gospel of Mark, a continuation of what we have been reading, beginning at the 21st verse. The disciples and Jesus went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. Everyone, all there, were amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. SJU, friends and family, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We have a moment now, as is our tradition with our children and youth, as we um, continue in this sermon series with a theme of discipleship and the call to follow me. Um, we've been talking about the keys to discipleship. And today's key word is promise. And so let me show you our key word today, children and youth. The word is promise. And so you know what a promise is. It's something that is made between two or more people that is assured to happen, is sort of guaranteed, if you will. And today's word promise is something that's important for us in this time. You heard the story about a man who was not well and approached Jesus, and Jesus was able to heal him. Friends, search our children, our children and youth, students of all ages, are preparing to re-enter their classrooms with an invitation to come back one or more days a week into an environment where they might not feel completely secure. And at any rate, it's an adjustment. But here's where the word promise comes into play. Jesus is with you. 
no matter where you go, whether you're learning at home or learning in your classroom, we want you to know that God is with you, promises never to leave you, that there's nothing that can separate you from God's love for you, and that Jesus is your constant companion on your own journey of discipleship, just as he was with the disciples, just as God has promised that the Holy Spirit would remind us of that. And so students, as you're thinking about going back into the classroom, as you're thinking about all of the things that you have to remember to do to stay safe and to protect your health and well-being, uh, we want you to remember that Jesus is always with you. The Holy Spirit is reminding you of God's presence. It's there to protect you, to guide you, to nudge you on the ways to go and the ways not to go. And that Jesus promises to never leave you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of all of our young people, our students and learners of all ages, and the teachers who accompany them in their growth and nurture. We pray for your protection around them as they seek to continue to grow in their body and mind and spirit. And we hold on to your promise that you are always with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, um, we are also delighted to um, welcome Reverend J.W. Park. His message today is based on today's scripture in the Gospel of Mark. And um, the title that goes along with this worship um, sermon is What Have You to Do With Us? Which is what the man who was ill um, and the spirit inside of him cried out to Jesus. Welcome, Reverend Park. Thank you, Mary Kay, and good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you. And even though it's a snowing outside, it's a wonderful that we are able to get together. And usually on Sunday, if it snows, and usually we either cancel our worship service. But one of the benefits of virtual worship is we can get together no matter what, right? As long as you have a Wi-Fi, electricity, we can connect together, right? Uh, may I invite you to pray with me before we uh, share God's words? Let us pray. A gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your day. You blessed us, the snow, and the wonderful uh, season of winter. Even though we are not able to get together physically, but we are able to worship you virtually. So we ask you to bless us through your spirit. As your word spoken and proclaimed, hide your servant behind your glory and only let your message of peace and love will spread in this world. We ask to be with us during this hour. So even though your servant speak, your spirit perfect it and let it inspire your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, um, I just want to share my greeting with Reverend Mary Kay Cannon and the members and friends of St. John's United and also Reverend Jacqueline Taylor, my colleague in ministry. And what a wonderful day we gather and worship together. And uh, my greeting comes from uh, Bishop Latrell Miller Easterling, our regiment bishop and the cabinet of the Baltimore Washington Annual Conference. Today, I have a little uh, emotion this morning because it has been almost eight years since I met you for the first time. And I'm sad to say this will be my last annual meeting with you because I will be finishing my maximum term of eight years as a district superintendent. And I will be appointed to a local church starting from July this year. And it has been my privilege and honor working with you. And I thank God for allowing me in this wonderful ministry as a district superintendent of Central Midland District. 
Uh, today is the fourth Sunday of Epiphany in liturgical calendar. And maybe you could go back to our scriptural background. So as you have read, I believe that the, the scriptural reading for two weeks ago was uh, uh, the portion in this Mark first chapter, first portion. And it said, it talks about John the Baptist was arrested after he successfully finished his task, which is prepared the way for the Lord. And then Jesus started his ministry, public ministry in Galilee. His message was pretty similar to John's message. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And in our story, Jesus called his disciple who were working in and around the Sea of Galilee. Basically, they were fishermen. And when Jesus called them, they dropped everything. They dropped the net, leave the boat, leave the family, and start following Jesus. Today's scripture happened to be on Sabbath. So Jesus taught in the synagogue. And as the scripture says, everybody in the synagogue was astounded about his teaching. His teaching was the one having authority, not as a scribe. Somehow, there is another character <clears throat> emerged, a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Well, in this such a short saying, this unclean spirit, or the man with the unclean spirit, summarized everything about who Jesus is. And then Jesus rebuked him, saying, be silent and come out of him. Then the unclean spirit came out of him. Well, this is such a short, a simple passage. Story have a happy ending. There was an issue. Jesus took care of it. Everybody went home happy. Well, is it really? Well, there's nothing much to talk about this story, right? However, there is a something that we need to pay attention in this short passage especially around what the man with unclean spirit confessed or talked. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Well, when we hear man with unclean spirit, who is it? Who is he? What is he? Well, these days, People frowned upon anybody talking about a demon or devil as a religious crazy lunatic or a person with a mental issues. Well, obviously, I'm not in a relig religious mysticism or I'm not a Pentecostal. But I got to tell you that there is demonic forces in our society in whatever form they may be. Well, thanks to the Hollywood, they helped us to have a, a very specific image of a demon. You know what, it, what I meant, right? Red face, the horn, and pitchfork. It would be a whole lot easier to identify the demon if the demon looked like that. Well, person with an unclean spirit could mean either a person with a mental illness or addiction, or literally person possessed by a demon. We have no idea. We don't know what it is exactly. Evil, however, is more of a force or an influence rather than a physical form. Evil is expressed in our life and society that harm people and our society, like racism. Is it individual or systemic? And also discrimination of all kinds. And any social ills 
like cycle of poverty, unfair housing practices, educational disparity, and corruptions of all kinds. Anything and everything that harm the well-being of individual and society. Evil is an intention to harm. An evil person is looking to harm others. So the question is a man with unclean spirit asks to Jesus, what have you to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth. The demon in the person asks Jesus, why don't you leave me alone? Why do you bother me? Just leave me alone. I'm happy and content. Basically, I, I understand that's what this demon in the man says. Why do you interrupt all the things? Well, we, including myself, are a being of resistant to the changes. Nobody likes changes. Maybe a little tiny bit of changes that brings um, something new and we can enjoy that. But when the change got bigger, beyond the parameter that we can stand or handle, then that's the time that we have problem. Well, how is our life these days? How is the current situation? Well, we now have the new president and his administration. Woohoo! However, our political situation is not that good yet. Do you all remember less than a month ago, there was a, a violation and violence in the Capitol Hill? Our nation is still divided. Doesn't look like it's going to go well soon. Well, can you get along well with each other? We cannot force others to love us or like us. Mm. But if someone hates others and intends to harm them, is evil. There is a clear line. While we don't get along with everybody perfect, but if you have an intention to harm others, that's where the evil starts. Mm -hmm. And the pandemic is still with us. The variations of the virus and the effectiveness of the vaccine may be in a perpetual battle on top of the slow speed of vaccination. I'm afraid that some experts saying, this may be our lifestyle from now on. How successful are we to bring out a vaccine that could target on this virus? Nobody knows. And the mental and psychological impact of the pandemic on people. It has been almost a year since the pandemic is here with us. People suffer the impact, the life, and getting tired. They're exhausted and tired of this. And we witness unimaginable number of people died in our nation, as well as in the whole world because of the virus. I believe we as a human being grieve over this happening. At least in our generation, we never have things like this. And the economy, domestic and global, and personal finance concerns so many people. While there are businesses thriving during these days, like uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, everybody take out, uh, advantage of repairing and fixing their houses, restaurants, and travel business, and all those rest of them suffer badly. 
On top of that, the fate and the future of a church called the United Methodist is still undetermined. The way we worship and fellowship has changed. The way we do our mission and ministry have changed. The people in the healthcare get tired and exhausted. The sacrifice they make is beyond they can handle. My deepest thanks to those who are working in mental health and all the healthcare area for their hard works and sacrifices. Why do I tell all this depressing stuff while you are already feeling it? Am I enjoying making people mad and depressed? No. I do not enjoy that, but the fact is fact. The first thing that we need to do is recognize the situation and fact finding and let's start from there. However, all the things that I just shared, isn't just depressing. Man, I think that America needs an exorcism. However, the good news and hope comes in our story. Why? Jesus cast the demon out of the man. Jesus made this man <clears throat> possessed by an unclean spirit clean and bring the wholeness in his life. And therefore, our hope is in Jesus. Jesus liberates us from the oppression and all kinds of bondage. If you say, oh, that's good, it's done, so the problem solved, we're going to go home and done. Well, that's about only half of our faith. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? The question is, what are we supposed to do with the faith? If our faith drove out the demon in our life, wonderful. Then what? Well, do you remember your baptismal vow? The pastor asked before you were baptized or confirmed, asking, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever form they may present themselves? The question asked by this man with unclean spirit could also be our question. What have you to do with us, the Jesus of Nazareth? What do we do with this thing called faith in Jesus Christ? Maybe the reason why this uh, demon in this inside the man asks his question is, I'm content and happy. Just leave us alone. I'm not, I don't like the change, in other words. And I think we can identify ourselves with that and relate ourselves to that. Asking not to change anything. As long as we're comfortable in that, we're okay. And this man continue on. Are you here to destroy us or destroy our lifestyle? However, our lives keep changing. Somehow our life forces us to change, transform, and it is not easy at all. Well, when you talk about being a disciple of Jesus Christ, what does that mean? As we read about two weeks ago, the story of Jesus calling his disciples, what happened when they say yes to be uh, to not the visual, but not to the Jesus? That means that they change their life almost upside down. They leave their businesses, their lifestyle, even their family behind. 
and follow Jesus. It's harder doing it rather than saying it, right? Well, our light should reflect our faith. Our faith should make us to take actions. Do you remember what I said when I mentioned the baptismal covenant? The question, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever form they present themselves? We as a faith people, we as a disciples of Jesus Christ, should live our life towards that, including resist evil, injustice, and oppression, whatever form they may present themselves. What are those stuff? As I said earlier, any form, anything, and everything that harms us. Racism is one of those. All the things that are unfair in our lives. However, why do I feel like I'm preaching to the choir? Oh, yes, because it is because you are already doing all those things. I know what you did. Reverend Canahan shared with me about what you do or did. I know that you joined Northeastern Jurisdiction Call to Action in response to the evil of systemic racism and inequity. And I know you made a commitment to an anti-racism church at the Baltimore Eastern Conference and made a com commitment to be a Matthew 25 congregation for the PCUSA. Small groups in your church met for three months on anti-racism materials. You formed a dismantling racism team as a part of a key initiative for 2021. And this team formed the small groups and trained the congregation. SJU also participated pates in leadership and small groups for courageous conversations in Howard County, as just as Pastor made an announcement. And I encourage you to join. And you continue a partnership with the Bryant Wood Elementary to help the school and the children there. And SJU continues fighting for affordable housing in downtown Columbia. List goes on and on and on. How amazing it is. I'm amazed how much you do in and for the church and the community. I'm grateful for all the things that you do. However, I also admit the road ahead of us is long and winding. We may not be able to change the world all at once. But when we join our forces with our faith in Jesus Christ, we can make a huge change for better. What have you to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth. That is not only the question from the unclean spirit possessed man, but it should be the question to all of us all the time. The thing called faith is not just done once and for all. It is a continual. It is ongoing thing. Well, for those of you who are familiar with the Methodism, there's a Wesleyan concept of faith. John Wesley said, we are going on perfection. So today's, our life today should be better than our life yesterday. Our life tomorrow should be, should have, should be better than our life today. I think that's what it means when John Wesley say, going on a perfection. We may not be able to reach the perfect state, but we are 
becoming perfect. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? That is a question causing us to ponder and worry sometimes and decide and commit ourselves. I hope and pray that during this time of pandemic with a lot of changes, you stick to this question, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? What am I supposed to do with the faith in Jesus Christ that I have? So every day, every moment, every time you do something or say something, this question keep comes to you and navigate your life, be a guide in your life, how you conduct yourself in our day-to-day -day living. And also, I encourage you to continue to do the wonderful work. All the things that I mentioned that you do and you have done in the past, please keep up the good work. And my prayers goes with you. Even though I may finish my term and at the, at the end of June this year, SJU, St. John's United, will remain in my heart forever. And all the ministry changes that you make, they'll stay with me. And I want you to pray for me also. So through prayers, we support each other and continue on our ministry to change this world. Well, this is my sharing this morning with you. And may I ask you to pray with me. Let us pray. Loving God, we confess we are quite disheartened and disappointed of what is happening around us. However, we also know that you blessed us with a thing called faith in Jesus Christ and our desire to follow you in your footsteps. So we ask you to be with us and strengthen us as we continue on with our life as disciples of Christ. Give us courage and hope. Embolden us so we would not shy away when the opportunity comes, but boldly we could claim that we are your disciples. We name your name wherever we go. And we do as you have taught us to do. That we join our forces to change this world. There are many things to do, many things to do, but help us not to be discouraged and exhausted. But put us on the wing of eagle, soar into this high sky. We are grateful for all these saints of yours gathered today here. And as we continue on with our business as a church, we ask you to bless us through your spirit. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Messiah, and our Master, Jesus the Christ. And people of God say, Amen. 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 Reverend Park, we give thanks to God for you, for your unique createdness and life journey, for your gifts and call that have led you um, to say yes to serving and leading us for the past eight years. We are so appreciative of your exhortation, the way that you have encouraged us and built us up in hope that we could become um, more faithful followers and live into the vision to become the church that God is calling us to be in our community in Wild Lake and Columbia and beyond. And we bless you and send you off with our prayers um, into your next steps of leadership 
and service, knowing that you are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Thank you, Mary Kay. And uh, time flies when you, have, when you have fun, right? I, I feel like I met you yesterday and it's been already eight it years. It has gone by. It has gone by very quickly. It has coincided exactly with my term of leadership with St. John. I started here on July 1st. Um, yes, it'll be eight years. So, Friends, I, in recent... I'm sorry, Mary Kay. I, I got to tell you that you are such a wonderful, perfect match as a pastor to SJU. And everybody in SJU, you guys are wonderful. And uh, you may not be big as other churches. You are in small in number. Well, not so small, but you are mighty in your ministry. And uh, sometimes you have no perspective of what kind of church you are. But trust me, I have 78 churches in my church, I mean, in my district. And I know about over 600 churches in our annual conference. And there are no church like SJU. And all the things that you do in the name of Christ, that it means a lot. So I'm not asking you to be uh, snobbish or arrogant, but you need to know that you are great people and keep up the good word. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very Thank much. You. And I think the gratitude for um, our life together is mutual. Um, and, um, and I think that it is out of that gratitude that we um, continue to say yes and, and yes more often uh, to being and, and doing and serving um, in the ways that God calls us to. And, so um, I, I agree with the mutuality of that, of that fit and blessing. Amen. So friends, um, in response to God's word, um, proclaimed and received and uh, beginning now to be lived out, we invite you to think about giving of your whole life as you think of what has God to do with you now. And so as you contemplate that, we remind you that we have ways for you to continue your generosity to the church um, using uh, a number of ways through the Givelify app on your mobile device or computer uh, and searching for St. John United on Twin Rivers Road. And you are able also to give through our Donate Now button on our website at sjunited.org. You can always make an automatic payment set up with your banking institution or by mailing your contribution to the church. On today, we remind you of that wonderful conversation and witness to discipleship that we had with Nat and Dawn Barnes uh, as they have established and been in relationship with us for the Children of Aurora Foundation's Orphanage outside of Monrovia in Liberia. And so in support of that, we remind you that on the website and on the Givelify app, you may designate from now until February 7th, a special offering and giving that will go directly and fully and completely to that mission and ministry to serve some of the bright and beautiful young faces that you see on that screen. That picture was taken in July of 2020. Friends, as you contemplate your response, will you please hear this call to generosity? God of power and wisdom, we give you our eternal thanks for the gift of your son, who came not only to save, but to teach us about your kingdom and how we might live, readying ourselves for that kingdom. He taught with authority, and if we listen, we will live a life of generosity mercy and compassion. Bless what we give this day of ourselves and our very selves to help us be faithful in the use of all our resources that we might live like those anticipating your kingdom. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our song of reflection this morning is Be Thou My Vision. 
Friends, we usually have been graced with fabulous um, worship productions, and today is fabulous as well. But um, uh, we've had just had some technical issues, and um, but thank you for bearing with us. A uh, reminder that our sermon series, uh, Follow Me, will continue next week uh, with further in the scripture of Mark, verses 29 through 39. And the title and theme for next week will be, She Began to Serve. So Chris, if we will have um, more success moving forward with the, um, with the closing song, why don't we do that? See
who the VR high school is uh, or the Rangers, mm -hmm. but I love that arrangement um, that they brought us today and um, hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, friends, as we prepare to depart for our um, annual meeting, will you please receive this blessing? Jesus comes to us offering healing and hope, speaking and <coughs> acting with authority. Listen to him. Go into the world confident in God's love and healing power. Go in peace and may God's love and peace always be with you. Amen. Pastor Canahan, before we move along to the meeting, I'd like to let everyone know today's full service will be re-edited and reposted on YouTube. So um, fret not. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. So um, a smile, be well, stay safely distanced, wear your mask, wash your hands, um, and we will have, um, we have a closing smile for you there. I don't know if you can see it, if it's cut off on the top of your screen. Let me close this out. And uh, one snowman says to the other, Carl, have you been working out? Okay, I hope that brings a smile to your face. You're watching what may be the world's most unlikely art collector. For as this long-haired terrier dashes through the snow, he's actually gathering hundreds of stunning masterpieces that will be proudly displayed on his nose, whiskers, and ears. They are snowflakes, the crown jewels of winter. And with a microscope, camera, and just the right temperature and humidity, a dog's frosted face becomes a gallery filled with spectacular wonders. Take a look. Every snowflake is actually a crystal made of frozen water vapor that condenses into ice. One small crystal may contain a thousand million billion molecular building blocks. With possible formations so numerous and diverse, no two snowflakes are exactly alike. The process of their assembly is fascinating. This cloud bank contains more than a million tons of liquid water, most of it in the form of droplets on the verge of freezing. A snowflake begins when one of these drops collides with a fragment of dust or pollen. Then it quickly freezes to create a template called a seed crystal. As more water molecules condense, the shape of the growing crystal becomes a hexagon. The formation of its six facets is determined by the chemical composition of every water molecule. One atom of oxygen and two of hydrogen that naturally attract and bond tightly to each other. In a matter of minutes, chemical reactions cause more water molecules to self-arrange into a hexagonal framework, the core structure that defines almost every crystal of snow. Water vapor continues to solidify on the edges of the growing crystal as six matching arms branch out simultaneously. Surrounding droplets that don't freeze, evaporate and release additional H2O molecules, the raw materials necessary for the crystal's full development. To date, researchers have identified at least 35 distinctive categories of snowflakes each basic shape is the product of small variations in atmospheric conditions, including wind velocity, temperature, and humidity. But snowflakes don't have to be artistic triumphs to fulfill their most familiar purposes. In fact, they could all be uniform, shapeless globs of ice and still effectively insulate and cool our planet. 
help regulate the life cycles of many animals and plants, store enormous reserves of fresh water for distribution throughout the year, and paint the continents with breathtaking landscapes that can fill us with wonder and awe. Yet beyond the obvious large-scale importance of snow, a timeless question lingers in the details. Why do individual crystals fall to earth in such visually extravagant packages? An Old Testament scripture may provide a clue. Then the Lord spoke to Job, Have you entered the treasures of the snow? Tell me if you have understanding. Those ancient words still challenge us to pause and consider the true significance of nature's hidden treasures, including these brilliant works of art that adorn the earth. You see, snowflakes may be far more than the result of blind chemistry and the inevitable bonding of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. For while natural laws, including chemical attraction and gravity, play important roles in a crystal's development, it can be argued that the elegant geometry and meticulous organization displayed here imply the existence of both an artist and architect, a creator who first calibrated the finely tuned conditions that govern everything in the physical universe, including the formation of snowflakes. This assumption is reasonable because without a lawgiver, there would be no natural laws, no earth, no atmosphere, and no water molecules designed to freeze into objects so stunning in their appearance that they capture our full attention. And then silently proclaim, yes, there is a God.